So what is a tenor clef? Well, it's a clef used for the cello, trombone, and bassoon when they play in ranges just above the bass clef and don't want a thousand ledger lines everywhere. Back in the Renaissance and Baroque days, it was used for some voice parts as well. The tenor clef is what we call a C clef. This means it marks middle C rather than G like the treble clef or F like the bass clef. Here, middle C is the second line from the top, and the two backward C's in the clef sandwich the line between them. You can actually move the C clef anywhere you want on the staff, but if you move it, it's no longer tenor clef. We'll get into what the other C clefs are called in other lessons. Here are all the notes on the tenor clef staff. Feel free to come up with mnemonics to help yourself learn them if you like. The way you draw a tenor clef is like this. You'll want to be careful to draw it in the right place so the C's sandwich the correct line, though. Here's a graphic that shows how to draw a C clef hugging the middle line. This one is called alto clef. The old style alto clefs we briefly mentioned in the alto clef lesson could also appear as tenor clefs just lined up around the second highest line to show that the middle C would be there instead. A couple other versions you may see include this one or even in very old medieval music, this thing on a four-line staff. It's just a C that hugs the C line. One thing you may want to keep in mind is that in tenor clef, the order in which you write sharps and flats on the staff when you write key signatures is going to look a little different, just to make sure they all fit on the staff. The sharps will look like this. And for flats, they will look like this. We won't be dealing with seven sharp and seven flat key signatures too often, at least. These are just for your information. Mm -hmm.